Steve, also Bill and, and Kerry just alluded to, this idea that there's a consolidation happening right now. What does the consolidation look like to you? Because we're seeing signs that there are traders and investors who are, in essence, maybe mini rotating, if you want, right? Out of names in technology and into places like energy and healthcare. Is this the beginning of at least a bit of a mean reversion trade back towards some of those quote unquote value parts of the market? Well, Dom, it's nice to see you. I think one of the things that you have to remember is that coming into this year, those two sectors that you just mentioned, energy and healthcare, were tops on the list for many investors in terms of which sectors they thought were going to outperform this year. Um, and clearly, we haven't experienced that. And so I think, you know, number one, just looking at it from a portfolio construction standpoint, taking some gains off the table, to Carrie's point, there has been um, significant money made in, you know, this top 7, 10, 15, stocks, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think that that rotation makes sense. In terms of energy, certainly the economic environment is supportive of a rotation back into energy stocks. And I think that's what you're seeing there. And with healthcare, there are a number of different facets of healthcare, whether it's managed care, drugs, or disposables. Healthcare is a very wide varied sector. We talked about this, you know, regarding industrials earlier this week, but it's true for healthcare as well. So there's a lot of different places to play in healthcare, and a number of those have not participated. And so if you're thinking about just from an overall risk standpoint, taking some of your winners off the table, taking some of those gains, and reallocating to places where if we do experience a broadening out, there is relative value from a multiple perspective. It's easier to find in those sectors like energy and healthcare than it is in other parts of technology, for instance. Steve, Steve, do you feel as though after seeing what we saw with the consumer price index data mm -hmm. and then what we saw with the producer price index data, so retail and business level inflation, do we feel as though, I mean, there's no such thing as an all clear in the market, yep. but do we feel as though the macro picture is stable enough right now where people can feel good about where they are in the market, as opposed to fearing for a, a, a surge in inflation again and higher interest rates on the back of that and everything else? No, I, I think there was something for bulls and bears in the numbers. Firstly, you had a revision, so it was a little hotter this report, but when you factor in the revision downward from last month, you're basically hitting consensus, right? And you've got to look at it on an average basis. Clearly, inflation's come down quite a bit, but you still have services inflation, which is being very stubborn. And I don't think you look at the market in just isolation. You know, as we talked earlier in the week, you've got credit card balances, credit card debt that's going a lot higher. So our economy is driven by the consumer. It's plain and simple, two thirds of it. That's true of most economies, right? So, so I think you can have comfort. I don't, I don't see a deep, dark recession, but you've also had some little dents in the, uh, in the Goldilocks scenario where you're trying to thread you know, all the Fed tightening with a soft landing and what set up for that, as Bill talked about, what got you to these levels, which, by the way, just to correct something you said, interpreting what I said, Mark didn't get where it is on fundamentals, okay? He got where it is on momentum, and it's coming back now, momentum's reversing. So, so no, I, I think you'd take as much comfort today as you took yesterday if you're a bull, and as, le as little comfort today as you took yesterday if you're a bear. So it's still, and that's what makes markets. Now, Shannon, uh, one of the things that we, you know, Steve brings up an interesting point with regard to some of the drivers behind the inflationary story right now. He mentions the services side of things. One of the other parts that gets a lot of attention right now is, is housing, uh, property values, owner equivalent rents. The, basically, the cost of living from a housing and real estate perspective remains stubbornly high right now and hasn't really hold back to a certain degree that can kind of aid that inflationary story. The housing market as a part of the overall stock market has been a momentum trade for various parts of the year. Do you think that that housing story is in a consolidation or transition phase as well right now? Housing is a very challenging area in that longer term, and this is not actually dissimilar to energy, but longer term, there's a there's clearly an undersupply, uh, particularly for residential housing here in the United States. And so on the back of that sort of secular trend of, and, and inclusive of the fact that millennials are beginning to accelerate household formation as they move past the student loan payment part of their financial life cycle, there, you know, there are going to be fits and starts in the housing story. Um, this constant give and take 
spike, if you will, as it relates to supply is um, offset, particularly in this environment, by the challenge of affordability. And so if we look at the housing market, what we really need to see is we really need to see um, a reset of expectations in terms of affordability and mortgage rates going forward, which probably means, to be honest, that we need to see expectations for rates to come down at least modestly um, in order to increase that affordability. Uh, but I think, you know, as it relates to housing, there's a mobility aspect of this that remains somewhat unclear. If you're thinking about, yes, we're building houses and who's buying those houses, it, in many cases, is going to have to be new entrants into the housing market, not existing home buyers, because they are anchored to very low mortgage rates. And so I think trying to figure out, you know, specifically where this housing growth is going to come from, how these companies are going to be able to monetize that, and what types of customers and clients this, you know, going after, you know, sort of with some of the high end homes, for instance, where you would be required to sell an existing property and move into that. Mortgage rates are very prohibitive right now to be able to support an en masse trade.